Hello guys, and welcome to my Season 14 Swing Guide. So it's been a little over a month since Season 14 started, so I feel more comfortable doing a guide now, explaining what my thoughts on the new season are, so now I have a better understanding at Swing Itemization, Runes, Updated Matchups, etc. Okay. First of all, who am I? I'm a Swain mid one trick who has been consistently high elo the last few years, hitting challenger multiple times, and right now in season 14, I'm 509 LP Grandmaster with a 63% win rate playing mostly Swain mid. Okay. Before we get into the video, my previous ultimate guide from three months ago is still very valuable. Okay. There's a lot of good stuff in there. Stuff like when to draft swing, etc. Uh, but stuff like runes, items, that stuff is of course outdated. That's why we make this guide to follow up, okay? We'll of course go over what runes do you take season 14? What do you build in season 14? I'll go over a lot of tips and tricks I have on. Some might know these tips and tricks because I've talked about them a lot. But if you're new here, I'll cover a lot of the stuff you need to know, okay? And finally, we're gonna end off talking about all Swain mid matchups and who I would suggest to ban for both mid lane and top lane, okay? I don't want to go too much into detail about stuff I don't really know about. That's why I won't be like covering in depth like support stuff, APC stuff, because I'm not really qualified for that, okay? I'm a great solo laner and I'm great at, good at playing Swain in solo lane. First, let's talk about Swain's strengths, okay? Swain is a complete monster in team fights and jungle skirmishes okay that means he's not super good in the 1v1 necessarily but he excels in 2v2s 3v3s 5v5s right play towards that especially early game you can get some matchups where it's really hard to win in the 1v1 let's say you're against asunta you don't really beat her 1v1 if you fight her 1v1 and just like keep going 1v1 in lane she'll just be better than you but unless let's say you then run into the river in a 2v2 then it changes completely the dynamic because now you are actually way stronger than her in a 2v2 compared to if you were only to go 1v1 she would beat you okay but in a 2v2 you could win hard time so play towards that especially i've noted down here jungle fights is this early game like let's say that your jungler is fighting for a scuttle crab at level 6 you run down there with ultimate and ghost Nobody can match you at all. You are just like the one of the best champions in the game at that point, right? It's like a huge spike. You are so good in the 2v2, 3v3. Another strength of Swain is in the team fights. He is so good at creating space and taking attention. And by creating space, I mean he's a big front line. He stands in front of people. And all of the enemies are thinking like, yo, we need to hit Swain. Uh, he's gonna pull us all like he's doing, dealing a lot of damage. Like all their attention, all their mental stack goes towards Swain. Meaning your carries, let's say you have an ADC. He has a really good opportunity to just stand behind you and auto attack throughout his spells without being in danger. Because you are creating space for him, okay? By taking all the attention. Another strength Swain has is he's a really good debuffer. And I've typed AoE here as well because all his spells are AoE. And that mean, means he's really good at utilizing stuff like anti-heal. Leandris Burn, Rylai Slow, all those like debuff items he's really good at using. We'll get back to the builds a little later. So let's talk about his next strengths, okay? And that is utility, of course. Yes, Root on E, yes, Slow on W, Slow on Ultimate. You can build Rylai so you get even more utility. And you can opt for like tank items as well. Like you can do, you just provide a lot of value to the team that is not necessarily damage only. And that makes him really strong and you can utilize this if you are behind because swain is pretty bad when see once he's behind then you can like opt for more utility focused items that will help your team play the game so you can create space be a frontline and bring a big value to the team that is not only damage speaking about damage and frontline the next point is he can almost build anything okay and by that, I mean he's like super versatile champion. Because, let's say your team, oh, we need more damage. Fine. I can buy damage. Yeah, we need more frontline. We can buy frontline. Oh, they have a lot of tanks. We can buy 
He can't the rift maker, right? Oh, they have healing? This is insanely good with Oblivion Orb and the heal. They are high 80 comp? Okay, we can buy a lot of good armor items to pick from. Oh, they have a lot of AP? We have a lot of good magic resist items to pick from. Like, he can just build anything that fits the game very, very well. You could even go like Knight's Vow if you have a fat hyper carry. Let's say you have a Jinx. Feel free to buy Knight's Vow and just put it on her, frontline for her, and it's gonna be so easy. He is very versatile. That also means that some people think he's a pretty bad blind pick. I will say though, he has some hard matchups, but because he can build so much different stuff, depending on the game, he is not that bad, okay? He can make it work. That's why you can make it work being an OTP with a champion that is not super blind pickable, because he can build almost anything. Talking about OTPing Swain, He's also good in multiple roles, meaning that if you get filled, let's say you play mid lane main like me, but if I get filled to top lane, I can play top lane Swain as well. He's also good up there. I could also, let's say my secondary role is APC. He's also good APC. Let's say you play only bot lane. Then if you get an APC or support, he works fine there, right? Pretty rare to find champions that can be played in four roles. So that's definitely one of his strengths. If you're looking to one trick him, for example. Then probably to the biggest strength, okay? He destroys melee comps. Like he is so good if they have like a tank top laner, bruiser jungle, let's say they have a Kiana mid lane, Nautilus support, okay? Complete melee team, right? They just cannot get away from you, bro. Like really. And they are all in your ultimate range, you heal a lot, nobody can get away, you just get to apply anything, they cannot kite you, your ult is permanently up, right? He's so strong against melee comps. If you want to add like Swain to your champion pool, not to one trick him, I will say he's really good to have as like a counter to enemy melee comps. They pick like three, four melee champs, usually very good Swain game. You get so much value from this champion against melee comps. It's usually uh, just a free win. And to my last strength, he's actually pretty strong in 1v2ing, especially at like level six. Let's say you were recalled, got like lost chapter, you're level six. Enemy jungle ganks, enemy jungle is only like level 4 or 5 or like enemy support rooms is only like level 3 or 4 and they gang up on you too man. It's actually not that difficult to outplay if you have ghost ultimate with like one component okay. His ult is so strong early game because nobody has the damage to burn through you while you're healing a lot simultaneously. But Swain is of course not completely broken okay. He does have some weaknesses. One of them is he's really immobile. This is a big problem, especially in high elo. When the enemy support is permanently roaming, the enemy jungle is looking for ganks mid lane all the time. It can be really frustrating to play because you only have flash or ghost if you run that. Or else you have a pretty slow base movement speed, 330. You can only mostly just like run away, hope you don't die. He can also be easier to kite because he's so immobile. Another weakness is he's also incredibly weak if he falls behind. Because if he's behind, he doesn't deal any damage and he's not tanky enough to tank for real, right? So he just like, he's just there existing. So my best like bet, if you are really far behind, go like full, full frozen heart abyssal, rhylize, like utility items that can help your team. Uh, but swing can feel very useless if behind, but very overpowered if he's ahead, okay? So you need to have a solid laning phase, solid fundamentals, so you can not fall behind in all your games, okay? You want to at least be even. And if you can win the lane, it's very strong. He has great snowball potential. Now next weakness is he's very outranged. This kind of ties together with immobile, uh, but he's really strong against melee comps, right? But enemy team can have some range comps. Let's say they have like, Lulu Jinx bot, Syntra mid, and then even if they have like two melees top and top and uh, jungle, it's still pretty bad, right? Because it's very hard to get in range of them, and they can just stand out of your ultimate range and just hit you, and they deal a lot of damage, right? This is why you really need to have like Ghost, and you can also have Flash to counter the immobile and outrange part. That's also why stuff like Rhylize Cosmic Drive is really good for him. So he can actually get some mobility from items now that his kit doesn't have it, okay? Another weakness is his E and W is pretty easy to dodge. He is pretty slow and you have to hit it on the way back, right? 
and it's W, you cannot hit it unless it's comboed with a CC or the enemy is legit just standing still or looking in shop. This is a big problem against, let's say you're playing against a Sundra. It's like a bonus weakness he has, is when enemy is really good at dodging skill shots, it gets really hard to get your passive stacks up, okay? So let's say you're playing against a Sundra and you can just never hit her with E or W. Sometimes you can get out of laning phase with legit like 3 stacks. While other matchups you can have 30 stacks coming out of lane, right? So there's like a big difference there. Having like no HP from passive or having like 500 HP from passive, right? Then for the last weakness, can have mana problems early. If you're not running double mana runes, if you are spamming your W and E early game, okay? If you're just continuously throwing out E every time enemy walk up and you keep missing it, you're gonna run out of mana. Don't use W, E early to push the wave unless you already know you're gonna reset. So he does have some, some weaknesses, but I will say though, he has a lot of strengths and you can definitely play around the weaknesses if you have a lot of experience in the champ. So let's shortly talk about some of Swain's spikes, okay? It's at level 6, he's just like the best champion in the game. Especially if you have ghost up, you can just force anything and you'll win it, basically. Then for a big misconception guys, Swain is not a late game champion. His strongest point is in the mid game, I would say around from anywhere between like 12 minutes to 25 is like, this is where you need to perform, okay? Around two items, you are just a complete demon. Once it goes like really late game, you will only feel really powerful if you're already very ahead, right? Now guys, let's talk about some of the things that really changed for season 14. There are two room pages, it's gonna be a little complicated, but I'm gonna tie this together with the builds, okay? Because it depends what you're gonna build. So let's make the first room page. And this is if you want to run double mana runes, okay? You want to pick between Airy or Face Rush. Don't think about Conqueror, guys. It's not worth it. Only gives you some AP. The healing is you cannot feel the healing at all. It's very inconsistent. From Airy, you always get value in the laning phase or like from Face Rush, right? So if you want to pick a scaling rune, don't pick Conqueror, pick Face Rush. But I'll talk about some other instances where face rush is really good and that is against like a longer range champions so let's say they have a victor oriana syndra i suggest you pick face rush if they have some melee champs i suggest you take airy this room gives insane value in the laning phase conqueror gives no value in the laning phase and you might say well conqueror scales better and it's better in the later game team fights but the problem is if you have a weak laning phase you're never gonna be strong in the team fights anyways, okay? Airy will give you a strong early game where you can get a big lead into the mid game so you can get your items and pop off, okay? You can lose a lot of matchups simply because you have Conqueror instead of Airy and then you fall behind and become super weak. It's not even that weak in mid late game. It still gives, I would almost like without having the math here, I'd say it does the same damage at least in the like in the f later fights. Then you pick Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, and Scorch. Okay, Scorch paired with Airy is very oppressive, guys. And you can just walk up against melee champs and Q them, and they won't be able to dodge it because Q is so fast, you can't dodge Q. And you just apply Airy Scorch. This is like extra 40 damage early game. How can the enemy Kiana play the game if you keep walking up, hitting her with Airy Scorch Q every 10 seconds? Okay, so now for the secondary tree, if you want to go no mana build, okay, you need presence of mind for double mana runes. So you have presence of mind and mana flow band. This way you will not run out of mana unless you are hitting all your keys like monkey, okay. Then I would suggest you either pick legend tenacity if enemy team has a lot of CC, it could be twisted fate. They maybe have a Sichuani jungle, etc. Right? Does that make sense? If they don't have any CC, I would suggest you go for either Last Stand or Coup de Gras. Both are almost the same. Coup de Gras actually is very strong in laning phase, paired with Airy Scorch. If you're in like a really winning matchup, because then the enemy is gonna be low HP and you can cheese out kills. Last Stand doesn't really give value to laning phase if you are like in the driver's seat, right? If you're against a Kiana and you just keep poking her with Aerie Scorch, you're not gonna get value from Last Stand, she'll just be stuck on tower while you can get value from Coupe de Gras, okay? So, 
this is just like a preference what you think okay you're super aggressive want early kills okay cool grass just like wanna have a, like a better mid game fight last stand okay so between last stand tenacity coup de gras stuff like this okay but you need to have the presence of mind if you're going no mana build okay by no mana build i mean you're not running like rod of ages malignants those like ap mana items okay for the shards i'm not kidding but swain is so versatile you can almost do anything down here that will work i like to take attack speed against like melee champs and also other matchups where i need to like auto attack the wave consistently for prior and i don't want to like lose minions this is this rune is pretty forgiving because it makes it easier to last it so if you're like me to keep missing your cannon minions or like other minions just for free attack speed could be good ability haste is also just like a good option you can even do double adaptive if you honestly want but i would suggest picking between attack speed ability haste depending on what how you are as a player if you have trouble last hitting go attack speed and then for secondary rows i would suggest to go scaling health but movement speed is also viable i would say two percent is not super good you only get seven flat movement speed more it can make a difference against like oriana sunta but typically getting just this free health scaling is very valuable it's like a free ruby crystal in the mid game so i'd go scaling health then for the last row it's very flexible okay i typically think about do i have like a free lane we can go health scaling is the lane gonna be very explosive with a lot of early trading this could be like a action matchup tristana matchup like stuff that, that, that wants to fight you early on right then getting a, a 65 health is pretty valuable compared to the scaling scaling health is gonna be better after level 7 if you're like up against a champion that is very aggressive early game and you want to fight back maybe with this this like room page you want to fight back and you can go this if they have a lot of let's say they have twisted fate right let's go this for for example this would be my room page against twisted fate i can also attack the wave to get to keep prior i can also attack him don't miss cs here get scaling hp and we get 30 percent here from the rooms it's very good we don't even have to buy mercs now let's talk about the room page if you want to buy stuff like rod of ages malignants okay and it's basically almost the same for the first page again swap to rain if you're against like range go face rush against melee like people you can abuse early range summon air but you can be way more flexible on your secondary page you could even go like triumph like this i would also suggest probably going like just result secondary you can go to the, the old page from last season just getting more armor health right you can even go for stuff like demolish now okay let's say we're up against a fist maybe we want to get bone plating as well right up against maybe a sia sundra let's take second win so we can sustain a little more hp you can be very flexible if you want to buy some of the mana items because you don't have to rely on the presence of mind, okay? You can also just like go Legend Tenacity Last Stand, right? This would be fine as well. So it's very much up to you, I'd say, if you have no clue what you want to do. If you just want me to give like a roam page, honestly, just taking conditioning, overgrowth is probably pretty well for you, man. Now, let's move on to the builds. It's gonna make a little more sense. Okay, guys. First buy, the orange ring, two pots, okay? Don't start tier because you're going like the mana less runes or anything it's so bad for laning phase get the fighting power from the orange ring very good component here okay i'll go over like the builds you can buy so first let's talk about mana less builds okay this is if you have presence of mind as your secondaries and mana flow band. so like these builds are very very flexible you can be extremely versatile depending on the game what i like to do is I like to start Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Then for boots, you have a few options, but I will recommend Boots of Lucidity, very easy, cheap buy. You could also, if you just like a small more damage, you could also go Sork Shoes. But I think the haste is very valuable and getting Summoner Spells haste is also underrated. Of course for boots as well, guys, if they have like three, four auto attackers, consider play the steel caps. If they have like some AP and uh, CC, and you don't have maybe tenacity rune, consider mercs. Swiftness can also be an option if they have like Cillian Ash, Nasus. These are also very cheap. 60 flat move speed, pretty good. But in general, usually boots of lucidity or sock shoes is what you need to pick from. Okay. And then now it becomes really flexible on what you build after Rylize. Because you can legit pick almost anything. Okay, we want more spacing power. Fine, we can go cosmic drive, right? 
Oh, we won't. They have like three auto taggers and they have a lot of AD heavy count. Boom, frozen heart second. Okay. Oh, they. We need some more damage. They have some tanks. Leandris. Oh, they have. We need more damage, but they don't have like a lot of tanks. Rift make a really good option. Gives a lot of AP, 10% amp, and more haste and more AP than Leandris, for example. So you can legit just build anything depending on the game. I've also done a lot of Rylai's Cosmic. This gives insane like kiting power because the enemy is super slow and you're just like very fast, right? So guys, legit, if you're running double mana runes, you can build anything. Oh, it's up to you. I think the really cheap Rylai's Crystal set are very strong because you can just like build into anything. Let's say your team is, is getting, you have a fat ADC and you're, all, you're like looking at your team and you think, okay, we just need to frontline. Okay, they have a lot of AD, let's get this. They maybe have like one AP or like one AP, four AD. Okay, let's let's get this. Then we get some magic resistance against the AP guy and we get some more armor, right? We, we get a lot of resistances. But yeah, legit, you can be so flexible. Oblivion Orb, they have some healing, right? Oh, they have some tanks. We can go Leander second, really strong. Okay, let's say... We actually, we don't really mind having more resistances, okay? We might have a really strong tanky team. Let's go for more like damage here. Oh, they have maybe like a set or like a, a Vega or something like a, We want like a stasis or something, do you know what I mean? We can still go Sonic. Like you can almost build anything legit. As long as you have like Rylai's Ionia boots, I think you're pretty good. You can opt into anything depending on the game i will go over a few items i think it's pretty bait something you shouldn't buy okay so first of all we talked about this before spirit visage guys not super good if we compare this to good old abyssal just like force of nature these are like the emma items right if you just like look at the stats spirit visage and abyssal has the same magic resist but you get more actually from abyssal mask if you're like standing close to people it's also 500 gold less expensive okay and you don't need this base health region you don't need like 450 ap it's better to have like a cheaper item so spirit visage is only something you should buy if you have enchanters on your team already so this healing and shielding effectiveness is actually gonna be like significantly enough that it's gonna be better than having getting like you can get 100 magic resist from this item it's 500 gold cheaper and it reduces enemy magic so you actually get damage from this item as well Force of Nature is another good Emma item this season. It's cheaper than Spirit Visage and it's only 400 gold more expensive than Abyssal. It doesn't give haste, but it does give a lot of mobility. Look, 5% movement speed. And once you stack it up fully, it gives 70 magic resist. Paired with the 55 from Force of Nature, that's like standard. This is the biggest Emma item in the game once it's stacked up. And you get 10% movement speed. So it's kind of like old Cosmic as well, with like the movement speed wise. So this item. It's definitely viable as well. You get a big chunk of magic resist and you get a lot of kiting potential with the movements. Don't sleep on this item. I think it's good, but Abyssal Mask is super strong. It's like by default, it's super cheap, gives you more damage, more damage to the team, gives like just a lot of magic resist compared to how expensive the item is. And it gives haste and haste is a really good stand on swing, guys. Now let's talk about some of the tank armor bait items. And I will say, sadly, guys, I think Unending Despair is not worth it, okay? If you look at the stats, it's simply compared to Frozen Heart. Like, it gives less armor, less haste, it's 400 gold more expensive, and the passive is very inconsistent, guys. I know it looks really cool, you drain HP, and you, you know, you heal yourself, but it's every 7 seconds, man. So inconsistent. Frozen Heart is cheaper, the value is there instantly, slow their attack speed, you take less damage from the rock solid, right? And you get mana, so let's say you're running no mana items, then if you get Frozen Heart, then you have a lot of mana still, right? So your, your only true like armor options, Sonya's, Frozen Heart, Jack Show. Jack Show is good if you're against like mixed damage, and you already have like, let's say you ha already have Frozen Heart Abyssal, then Jack Show is really, really valuable. Because it gives 30% extra of your bonus resistances, right? So it's only good if you already have magic resistances and armor. Boom. You see, we get a lot. Uh, almost like 200 armor, 200 magic resist. This is like very strong free items. If you want like a lot of mixed resistances against a team that has like pretty hybrid damage, right? But yeah, again, super flexible build, guys. You can even go Leandris first. You could also just like skip 
Rylai's cosmic if you have like double mana. You can even start like Rylai's and then you then it, it starts to make sense like oh they actually have a lot of 80. Let's go Frozen Heart second. And now maybe the game is progressing so that we need like more tankiness. Like okay, we need the stasis and then we maybe need like more damage, okay. So a build could still look like this and it'll be completely fine, okay. There is no like completely right or wrong build. You can build so much. Swain is insanely flexible. That's what I want you to take away from this. Even this build without Rylai's or Cosmic can still work. You still have Flash, you still have Ghost, right? Sometimes maybe you're against a melee team where all the enemies already come into you, right? You don't need like to, to, to stick onto them because they are running into you, okay? Then you could maybe do this, right? Like you can, it's all up to you and your creativity, how you want to build him. Swain, super strong, flexible champ, a lot of builds. Let's talk about some of the mana options because these aren't as flexible as without. So it's gonna make maybe a little more sense if you're not super creative. But basically, if you want to go Malignant's build, you want to start off Lost Chapter first. Very good component, gives your mana. Then you wanna realize Rush, yeah, okay. This is very strong two, uh, two like items items uh, and then you want to finish malignance malignance is actually not super good if you buy it like first item i would rather have you wait until you have realized and just sit on lost chapter and then finish malignance okay now the build becomes kind of flexible i would suggest you just go like if you want more damage liandri very good go sonia's but you can also if you want to just go like Frozen Art Abyssal, if you want cheap tankiness, okay, like this, for example, if you just like one more tankiness, but if you want to do like more damage, you could do this build. It's very similar to like last season's standard build, if you remember that, with the uh, Leandris, Rylai's, Sonya's Hourglass Abyssal, right, because it has a lot of burn, it has the slow, the good thing about this build is it does a lot of damage because of these items. And then once you get low HP, you're like in the middle of a fight, you get low HP, just press Sonya's and then heal up and you just like cause a big distraction. A lot of zone control with Rylai's and Malign Malignance. Very strong, I would say. Can recommend if you like the mana items. The other mana build I would recommend is the good old Super Surf build, okay guys? This is the one with Rod of Ages. And then you need to go Cosmic Drive, okay? And the reason why you don't go Rylai's with this build is because look, Rod of Ages no ability haste it's just gonna lag a lot of damage because you have no haste and these two items are not really heavy ap or heavy damage cosmic on the other hand you might say well it gives almost the same ap yeah but you get 25 haste so haste is actually one of the stats in the game that's both offensive and defensive right it gives more utility more spell cast but at the same time that also means more damage right and then now you typically want to build like, okay, they have a lot of AP, Bissle Mass. Okay, they have a lot of A80. Uh, maybe we go Frozen Heart instead, right? And then you can finish off with like this. You can also say, okay, we don't want that Jack Show. Let's just, they have a lot of tanks. Let's get Leandis, right? So guys, what I want, the main point I want you to take away from this build section. You can be super flexible with the builds. As long as you just like follow these guidelines I set out and don't like build completely troll items you'll be fine okay you can even go like if you have double mana runes for example you could even go like stuff like this okay and you'll probably be fine okay it's like more, more of a supportive build insanely cheap okay guys no more talking about builds let's talk about summoner spells first of all and the most important summoner spell on swain is ghost okay you need to have ghost always then you can't be flexible from this point on recently i've had a lot of success ghost flash this is just very solid summoner spells uh, if you don't know what to take and you are like die to jungle ganks like me ghost flash is just very valuable but you have some variation here if you want you can go ghost ignite as well ignite will give you more kill pressure early game this is especially good if you're playing against like akali kiana talon stuff like those champs that you can beat up early game could also be yone it could give you a big advantage if you get like an early kill or just like more power in the 1v1 fight, okay? The other variation is Ghost TP. This can be used if enemy mid laner is pretty like bully, right? It's like a Syntra Oriana. You kind of need to get that TP reset so you don't like miss two waves or anything like that. Also against 
champs that like to split push. Let's say you're playing against a Twisted Fate. It's also kind of nice to have Ghost TP. Because once he drops into the side lanes in the mid game, you can actually go and match him. Without him just TPing away and winning a team fight somewhere else. And you cannot follow because you had like Ghost Flash, right, for example. But again, it's not that important, guys. If you just like Ghost Flash, that's fine. You can climb with all of these like combinations, okay? Pick like one you really enjoy, okay? Don't overthink it, guys. It's the same with like builds and rooms. Just do what makes sense, okay? You need... When a champ is so flexible, where you can take like almost anything, you can build almost anything, it's pretty much up to you and your brain to figure out what you want to build. I can't just give you a build that will work every game because it depends on so many factors. Let's say they actually were 580 champions. Frozen Heart first item actually sounds pretty good now, right? And I would build that too. But it depends, guys. Be flexible. Use your brain. Build accordingly to your team comp, enemy team comp. And if you build wrong, guys, it's not the end of the world. You can still win, okay? What dictates the most if you win the game is your decision making and how you play the game, not like your builds, runes, summoner spells, okay? If you're a good player, you can still win the game with a less optimal build, runes, etc., okay? We are back in the practice tool. And now let's talk about tips and tricks on Swain. So firstly, guys, one of the most important things on Swain is your movement, okay? It's how you click, how you move around with your character. A character, as we spoke about earlier, is not, he's not mobile, he doesn't have dashes. So you need to be able to dodge skill shots without having a dash. That's why you need good movement. You also need good movement in team fights to move around the fight accordingly. And also, just like, imagine about this, guys. If you dodge like a skill shot, that actually makes you tankier. If you can dodge a lot of Ezreal Qs, you actually tankier because you like completely avoided all the damage. So if you have good movement, you'll feel really tanky if you like keep dodging stuff. Also, E is so slow. This is the thing I say a lot in my videos, guys. You can walk with your E, right? You can change the directory. The movement is super important. Don't just like, let's say the enemy is here. Don't just like throw out your E here and he dodges it and you just like stand still. Throw it out, you can move accordingly. Movement is legit one of the most broken things to be good at, especially on Swain, guys. Once you press the ghost ult in team fights, you can do a crazy spacing, keep the enemy at a distance, right? Pull them in again, like stay uh, complete, like keep the enemy. The best part to keep like enemy is like at the outer range of your ultimate, so you still can like pull them back in. They can't get away, but they are not in melee range, guys. Don't just like stand still here close to him unless you're like he's low HP or like you're super tanky and you can just shoot him in the face, right? If you're against like at Olaf or something, don't just stand still right in front of him, guys. You're still like a ranged character. Kiting, spacing, movement, super important, guys, okay? Now that we're talking about movement, I will, of course, discuss. Swain has some pretty nice flash mechanics, okay? Q flash. And no, don't flash Q. I want you to Q first, then flash. This is undodgeable compared to if you... Flash, then the enemy can react and flash himself, right? Q flash, the next flash mechanic is E, and then reposition with a flash, right? This is really useful. If you throw out your E and you can see it's not gonna land, then you can like last second flash to them. Let's say it's a priority target in a team fight, and you are like Jinx, and you almost catch her, but you really need to kill her, right? So we flash and E her and pull her into the team, one shot her. You can do you can use it very like creatively. Now for the last flash mechanic, it's actually your, your ult flash and it's the same as Q, it's like a cast time, meaning you can flash with it, okay? So I'll show you here what you can do. Instead of flash ulting like before, we ult first and flash. So the explosion comes out like simultaneously as my flash and it's undodgeable. Those are the flash mechanics. Next I'm gonna talk about is Swain actually has like a really kind of strange interaction here. If he's about to die, look. If you use Q just before you die, it actually goes off. I'll show this one time again. It's very useful if you're in a fight and you're just like about to die. Sometimes you can even get like a or like a Q off even after you're dead. Because as long as you press it, it's gonna go off no matter what. I've gotten actually a lot of kills from this where I like I, I get to press Q just before I die and then I still kill the enemy even as he kills me, right? My next little mechanic is the melee E. This is very useful if you have like a Jax any like diver jumping on you you can use e 
And then if you are close to them and pull, look at this. I actually pushed them away. Okay. I'll show it one more time. So if you E and then close range melee, you actually push them a distance away. It's very nice to create distance. There's like a melee champ jumping on you. Say rumble is very close. You can like push him away, right? And then run. My next trick is the E extend. Long time followers already know this trick. I'm just gonna go over it for the new guys. But it's very useful. Let's see here. The E is not gonna hit the dummy. But if there's like a wave in front, it actually extends the distance, right? So let's try another time again down here. So for example, again, if we have a dummy here, throw a D. This, this is missing. It's not in range. But actually, if there was like a target in front of it, we do hit it, right? This is the E extend. Very useful in lane. If there's a, they are standing inside the enemy caster minions, you can usually like hit a E and it doesn't look like it's gonna hit, but it does hit because of the E explosion, okay? Very useful in laning phase. Then just like for a short rant about holding, holding ultimate guys, I see this so often. People use ultimate and then for example, three people are legit standing inside the ult and they are not hitting R2. That is so strange to me, okay? Because it doesn't make sense to hold your ult. It's not like the old ultimate before the mid scope where it actually did more damage if you held it like let it charge up for longer. It has no execute mechanic. It has no nothing. Okay. It does 150 here no matter when I press it. So why not just press it when people are inside it? Because what I usually see is people holding it and then all these guys, they, they run out and then now, now there's only one guy in my ult 2 range and this guy flashes out. And now I got no value out of it at all. Just press it, get the slow, and make sure you get the damage off, okay? The slow is also gonna help keep them inside your ultimate where you are the strongest, okay? The slow is also very useful if they are like running at the outskirts here. You get the slow, and then because they slowed, you can easy hit an E, right? Stop holding on to your R2, guys. Such a noob mistake. Even using against like one guy, two guys is better than not using against anyone. It's not that valuable to wait until you get five men inside your ultimate range. Because that's probably not going to happen. Take the safer bet. Just use it the ones that are like two, three people inside. Or maybe even if there's one guy where you need to slow him so you can hit an E. Then you can also use Demon Flare, okay? For another trick, guys. You might see this a lot in my videos. The enemy is about to respawn. And I put a W on the base. And it explodes just the moment they respawn. This is because W takes 1.5 seconds to explode, right? So you need to use your W on their respawn once it has like 1.5 seconds, right? Because then it's impossible to dodge. You get a free stack. They cannot dodge it, right? Plus 12 HP for free. And you slow them and you take away their home guard. So that they actually have to leave the base very slowly now. Especially if you're Rylias, right? Just destroy that tempo. It's really valuable once you're like late on the game look at this we have five points in, in w look at the range i can almost w him here so i can like every time somebody's respawning and i'm like close to their base boom free free stack destroy that tempo annoy them okay mental warfare another trick is i'm gonna turn up the volume here look at this if i cue the wave and there's no one inside okay now we queue it and there's an enemy inside. You can definitely, see, you can even see a difference and you can hear it. Also, if you have airy, the airy is gonna fly to the bush, okay? You can check like bushes if you're like walking here and you're kind of scared, right? You're rotating to both side. It's like cue the bush. Oh, there's one guy in here, right? Another little cool interaction is if you hit your W on an opponent, you get the soul, right? And if there's other souls laying nearby, you also get those souls, so. Let's say you are mid lane here, there's a bot fight happening. You can snipe one guy down there and collect like three souls that were just like lying around from the bot fight, right? It's like a little cool thing to know. And then of course, as I also say a lot in my videos, combo CC with W guys. If you are long, like long range here, let's say you have like a Nautilus, wait until he uses Q guys, be patient, then press a W. So it's guaranteed, okay? That's all for the tips and tricks. So guys, I made a matchup list for mid lane and this is my personal rating this can be very different from everyone else's okay this is just what i experience in my games what i think is difficult hard medium easy right i'll talk as shortly about all the matchups and maybe give a few tips let's start off with the easy matchups these champs are typically pretty weak 
early game or they are like melee champs melee assassins that doesn't really have a way of beating you up right or it could also be champs that just doesn't really do anything or you can just like roam against right let's say you're playing against seraphine she just cues the wave you can just like push it maybe faster than her roam around the map and you'll be more useful right same with like Melzaha, just cue his voidlings, one shot the wave, you can roam, okay? You can even kill him if he walks up. Let's talk about the champions. Galio, really easy. Probably the easiest matchup for Swain. He's just like a big tank. Collect a lot of free stacks, he's melee. In like early river skirmishes, on like one item, you can just press ultimate if he go ever goes on you and just kill him. He cannot really get away, he doesn't have any dashes away from you. You can slow him with R2 and just hit an E and it's over for him. Vega is not really super strong right now, doesn't do anything. Nefiri is pretty easy to hit with your E because of her small wolves. Kiana is one of the weakest early game champions from like 1 to one to 5. You can just super hard abuse her with Aryan Scorch. Melta as we said. Make sure you just clear his voidlings and then it's so easy, okay? Clear voidlings is first priority. You can easy poke him down and if his spell shield is down, if you hit like an E, just all in her man. He's not gonna fight you back. Only problem is if he gets a lot of jungle ganks and he's level 6, he presses ult. But still, very easy matchup. Cillian really doesn't do anything. Talon, melee assassin, very abusable to airy Q spam. Same with Rumble, also just like a melee champ. Annie again doesn't really do much. You can just permaharch your wave and roam if you don't feel like one we're wanting her. Vilkas again just stand still. Lysander has pretty good gang setup, but she doesn't really again do much. You'll be just like way better at level 6 than her in the early jungle fights. And you can poke her down with Q. As long as you just dodge the Q. But she also always throws like the Q through the mini wave. So just like be wary of that. You can even hit like easy ease on her. Set again. Super weak early game. Dodge shurikens. Harass with Q. Very easy. Kassadin. Extremely easy as well. Make sure you hold your Q until his magic shield is down. Just like perma auto attacking. Perma harass him. Even at level 6 if he jumps on you. You can just transform into that demon. And just pop him off okay. Azol, stand still when he uses Q. Easy land your E, easy land your W, very abusable. Pantheon, way shorter range than you, unless you are a complete donkey and keeps walking into his uh, W range and walking into his like Q poke. Six again, just stands back, push, throws out bombs, right? If you can dodge those, just match his shove, you can just roam and be way more useful, okay? Now we move on to the medium tier. This can differ a lot depending on like where you are in ELO or like how good you are as a player but this is at least my take on it i think a lot of these champions has some clear counter and like how to outplay them if you know what you are doing right so this is like matchup knowledge you need to have against a lot of these champs to beat them stuff like like vladimir play around this q cooldown right play around twist the fates pick a card it's pretty easy so if swabble is down you can all in right stuff like this karma doesn't really do much vex if she doesn't have fear she can't really do anything right it's like very clear reference points on when you can all in and beat them. Talia is pretty weak early, right? Rice is also just like a weak champ at the moment, but he can actually be a bit problematic because of his pushing and roaming. Luke's again, just clears wave. She, her E can be kind of difficult. You need to be good at tethering, guys. Again, a lot of these champs like Diana, Corgi, Ari, some of these are like range. You still walk up and queue them. Because your queue is actually pretty long range. It's not like these are super long range either. Heimerdinger is just annoying because he perma shoves the wave. Seraph is all about tethering mo movement, stuff like that, okay? And that's also why I said, guys, movement is so important, okay? If you have bad movement, you can, a lot of these matchups you can change because how can you play against Seraph if you're bad, bad movement, okay? If you can't dodge anything, it's gonna be unplayable. That's why you need good movement, okay? Echo is kinda getting into the, like, the harder part now as he can just like perma shove wave. He can also jump on you with Hail of Blades. Tristana can be very difficult early game, but once you get like around level 7, 8, you can actually win a 1v1. If you poke her down a bit, Katarina can be annoying because she just you can she can roam. And she has a pretty strong at level 3 power spike. If you can pull like an early freeze outside your tower, it's very easy. It's very abusable. Not the strongest laner at all, okay? Now we start getting up to more of like the harder champions. Yasu can be frustrating. Don't let him pull a freeze on you. You need to be very cautious with your wave management here. Pull a freeze on Fizz and it's easy peasy. But if he pulls a freeze on you and keeps you just outside your tower, he can like all in you. Victor, 
could be hard, but this is very dependent on your teammates and enemy team, okay? Because Victor is super easy to gank, but he's very strong in the 1v1. So in the 1v1, if you only if it's only a 1v1, he's probably really hard. But if you get like one support room, one jungle gank, it's pretty easy. The champ is not as good as Syndra Noriana. Let's talk about Yon. Yon has a very, very weak early game. And this is the part where most people get it wrong, okay? Because they don't abuse him enough early game. Once he recalls and get Berserkers, it's gonna be difficult, okay? But like 1-2 level 3, very abusable champ. Can get a big lead, solo kill him, okay? You don't win against him in the 1v1 later on. He's just like, just that's just like who Yon is. He always wins for no reason, just by auto attacking you. But at this point, hopefully, uh, maybe I've gotten a lead. Or you can outplay him in team fights. Don't outplay him in side lane. He's just gonna beat you always. And in team fights, you're still gonna be stronger, okay? Let's move on to the hard tier. Again, a lot of these champs could change depending on who you are as a player. And Eevee is pretty difficult, but you don't see her often. She's like really good against the mobile champs because of her ult and wall. And she can also just like perma shop. LeBlanc, really annoying. Very hard to hit your E on her. This is a lane where you get no passive stacks at all. Akali is just like very strong in the meta. She has one of the highest base regions. And she runs Thorn Shield second win, so she is impossible to poke down unless you are really good and she steps up too much, okay? Silas, very poked about matchup. I actually think if you are just thinking about that 1v1 in lane, I actually think Silas is bottom medium, okay? So he's not hard in lane at all. But the problem is, as we all know, mid lane and League of Legends is typically not a 1v1, okay? Jungle comes mid one time, support roams mid one time, Silas gets a freebie kill, okay? It's impossible now. Because this champ, if he's neutral or ahead, he will just be better than you because he takes your ultimate but in the 1v1 if he doesn't get any help he can be very easy right but this is my experience from high elo he typically gets a lot of help and it's just hard to play against once you fall behind and in like late game he's very difficult because of your ultimate now next Irelia mid lane she is hard I will say but not as hard as she is in top lane because of how the lane is if she pulls a freeze on you it's gonna be very hard to get out of luckily mid lane is it's harder to pull like infinite freezes on you and you can get like help from jungler help from support to push it out stuff like that but it's definitely not easy she gets better the ring king and she's just gonna melt you okay be very wary of her cues she's always gonna try to queue to like a low hp minion and like all in you so watch out for that next champion akshan he's just like really strong 1v1 champ she, he's kind of like tristana but just more difficult he can roam better he has very good wave clear as well at around level 8, 9, just like Tristana, you can kind of beat him if you play it well. Wei, new champion. Pretty strong, actually. He uh, does not have a weak early game. He's very impressive to play against if it's a good player. And he has really good wave clear. So you can be stuck a lot on the tower with low HP. Ariana and Syntra, those two champs were actually nerfed a lot since I made the ultimate guide. So I've moved them down a bit. They are still hard, but they are definitely easier to overcome than before. Nico is very stressful to play against. Luckily, she isn't picked much, but her Q is legit undodgeable. And if she takes Comet Scorch, she's gonna poke you down and be super useful. You can't really walk up. You can't get any stacks on her because she can just stand so far back. Same with Asia. You can stand really far back. She scales into Oblivion, becomes really strong. Very strong lane champion. He has really good gank setup because of his ultimate and he can dash onto you, right? And because you're immobile, it's really hard to avoid if you don't have flash. The only matchup I would say is impossible to play if you're up against a Cassiopeia. This matchup is so unplayable, it's crazy in mid lane. She's just like a way better version of you. She scales better, she's better in the 1v1. If she hits like a Q on you, she can just like run you down. If you're trying to fight her head on, she hits one Q, she can just like stand still, press E on cooldown and you will die, okay? She has so much sustained damage, she's very good against Swain, and she just like scales crazy hard compared to you, okay? Swain's not a big scaler, he's really good in the mid game, but Cassiopeia will give you such a hard time in the early mid game that you won't ever be better than her, okay? Uh, this is like my opinion on the tier list. For bans guys in the mid lane, at the moment I'm just banning Silas because he's kinda difficult if he gets help from team and that's like what he always gets in high elo. And your teammates can tilt really hard if you if they up against Silas on Swain because they uh, they don't like him stealing your ultimate. Okay. Also, he's just like very popular 
if we take a look at play rates, he is one of their most played mid laners in D2+, right? While a gem, you might ask me, why don't I ban Cassiopeia? But if you look, you have to scroll down. She's 1.7% pick rate, right? So it's not worth using your ban on Cassiopeia. If they lock in Cassiopeia, you can always dodge. But Silas, and I, I think this pick rate is way higher if you blind pick Swain, right? So that's where my ban is at the moment. You can also ban Syntra Ori, but their pick rate has fallen down drastically compared to when I made the ultimate guide, right? That's why I always consider pick rate when I'm thinking about who do I want to ban, okay? If you're playing top lane, I'd suggest you could ban stuff like Jax, difficult for Swain, Yon, it's difficult for Swain. These other are actually fine in my opinion. You can also just like ban Silas if you're top, if you're scared of them picking Silas in mid lane and just stealing your ult later on. That's also completely fine, okay? You might ask, what do I build on APC or support Swain? And honestly, you can mostly just build the same as you build on mid lane, okay guys? Be creative, think about the game. If you're support Swain, you can go Rylai's Frozen Heart Abyssal. Very cheap, helps your team a lot. Don't overthink it, guys. This guide will just help you towards making some better decisions, okay? When it comes to like Boban, what matchups should I watch out for? What should I typically build? What runes should I typically take? Okay, I want you to take away from this guide, but you find helpful, okay? Because at the end of the day, it's also about having fun. What I do might not work for you. This is what works for me and got me all the way to Challenger. But how you play Swain is kinda very boiled down to like your personal experience. What you like to build him. Some people just like to go full tank Swain. Others like to go full burst magic pen ap swain right and some people ask me well is this viable does this work and yes man you can almost win with anything okay you don't have to go anything i say you don't have to take the runes i say this is my suggestion if you want to like copy some of the stuff i do okay and guys this does work very well for me as i am currently the highest ranked mid laner in the world on swain okay and on the entire eos server the highest rated swain player okay so hopefully you can take some things away from this guide improve your own gameplay but remember guys this guide will not magically make you better at swain you need to play swain to get better watch this guide use all the information to get a better understanding but like all the matchup nitty gritty details you need to feel for yourself Enjoy the game, okay, guys? The game is super fun. I think Swain is in a really good spot right now. A lot of the meta champs right now is pretty good for Swain. If you have more questions, you can comment down below. Use common sense, guys. Use your own creative mind. Anything can almost work. If you look at all these other Swain players, look. Conqueror. Malignant's like first item. Leander's first item. Rift Mega first item. Like, look, all these guys got high elo, right? with different setup, different roles, right? Anything can honestly work, man. At the end of the day, your gameplay will be the reason if you're climbing or not, okay? Changing your build runes not magically gonna make you a better player or make you climb or anything, but it will help you a lot if you're running like completely wrong stuff in my opinion, okay? So I really hope you enjoyed this video and have a nice day. Hey Beatrice, let us expose these bitches. In the darkness I rise with a burning in my eyes. I'm the Grand Tactician.